Hey, all my warm fuzzy butter cookies, Jessie here, and today I'm going to read you all a classic fairy tale by the Brothers Grimm, The Poor Woodcutter and the Dove, and it is illustrated by Max Veltuij. He's some Dutch guy. So without further ado, let's get scrunching. Is he about to, like, chop the tree down with the dove? That's not good. And it is dedicated to all children who would like to be king. Hmm, I wonder where this is going. Once there was a poor, poor woodcutter. He lived with his wife in a little hut. See, there's the woodcutter, there's the wife, there's the hut. One day he went to the forest with his axe to look for a big tree to cut down. After he had worked for a while, he became tired and hungry. He sat down to rest, and looking up at the, at the beautiful trees, he saw some beautiful doves. Ooh, those are beautiful doves. The woodcutter was hungry and ran home to get a gun, so that he could, could shoot a dove for the cooking pot. But he did not hit a single bird. They all flew away. Only one came back glided down to the woodcutter and sat on his gun, saying, If you promise never to shoot at doves again, you may wish for anything that will bring you peace and happiness. The woodcutter was very surprised, but he gave his promise. He asked for a better house and some more money. When he returned to the place where his little hut had been, he saw a beautiful house. His wife was standing at the door with a smile on her face. Guess she is happy that the woodcutter got all that money. They lived happily and had nothing to worry about, but after a while, the woodcutter became dissatisfied. He wanted a big castle, beautiful clothes, and horses. He ran into the wood, calling to the dove, and told her his wishes. When he returned home, he saw a wonderful castle where the house had been. His wife, dressed in beautiful clothes, came to the window to welcome him. For some time he was a happy man. He was rich and powerful, and the peasants in the neighborhood treated him with respect. But once again he grew dissatisfied and went into the wood, called the dove, and asked her to make him a king. And he's riding a horse. So that's good. Once he was king, he felt even more powerful. He forced the peasants to pay heavy taxes on their land, and they paid because they were afraid of him. Thus he became very, very rich. But he was not satisfied. He was a king, but there were other rulers beside him, and he wanted to become king of all kings. Um, he chose the strongest men from among his peasants and form an, formed an army. With this army, he surrounded, he surrounded the castle of a neighboring king, whom he was determined to conquer, but he was received with a hail of bullets and arrows. His shoulders, soldiers, who had never been asked to fight before, threw down their weapons, and went, ran back to their farms. Oh, here's the battle. Here's, like, the enemy shooting arrows from the opposing castle. The soldiers and their horses are dying, and the king is trying to defend all of them on his horse. The king was very angry. He climbed the tower of his castle, called the dove, and said, Give me a great army with well-earned men, so that I shall have power over everyone. Only then will I be satisfied. No, said the dove. I have given you everything you needed to live in peace and happiness. Now you are asking for something that will bring you neither. She flew upward and settled on the roof of the castle. The king was mad with rage. He ordered a cannon. He ordered that a cannon should shoot the dove. The cannon was fired again and again, but no one could hit the dove. The whole castle was burned to the ground, and the woodcutter's riches were destroyed with it. He became a poor woodcutter again, and where the castle stood, there was a little hut. Every day he went to the wood where the dove lived. He cut down trees so that he could earn enough money to buy food for himself and his wife. With that, he had to be satisfied. The end. Well, that was a good story about accepting what you have and not asking for more. I had this problem as a kid, so my folks got me this book. So anyway, my warm fuzzy butter cookies, don't wish for more than you have. Read good books, bake good treats, and I'll see you all next time. In the meantime, I gotta fly, so bye!